We went down to West Virginia to take a look at coal mining because instead of going underground like they used to for decades and generations, they have a whole new way of doing it that blew our minds. We're on our way up to Larry Gibson's. Uh, he lives on this mountain and you'll see his property just has an incredible view of what's going on around here. By the way, us being up here isn't exactly what they're thrilled about. Uh, these companies don't want people to know this is going on. The locals are kind of screwed because this is how they make their living. So if they shoot their mouths off too much, they're shooting themselves in the foot. Holy shit! This is the new way that we mine for coal. I could easily tell you we're in Afghanistan in the mountains and we're looking for Osama bin Laden and you'd believe me. This is the second most biodiverse area in the world. And unfortunately, we need what's under these mountains and we'll do anything to get it. Coal companies like to do mountaintop removal because they can get more coal quicker, cheaper with less people. The bad part of that is it's an environmental impact that it has uh, on the streams and the environment. You just literally destroy the mountaintops and the valleys below them, where a deep mines does not. When the old timers mined coal, it was hard work. But now they need coal faster than men can mine it. So they're taking the tops off the mountain to get it faster. When George Bush first took office, he said, mine the coal, get the oil, get the gas, the company, the country needs it. So he just opened the doors, you know, it's just Pandora's box. Coal is also being sold to North Americans as this beacon for self-sufficiency in terms of a fossil fuel that we can depend on. But this is how we get it. And then you heat your homes with it. But those are things that happens under the public's eye. And, you know, under their noses, they, they just don't realize what is at stake here. And the coal companies get by. I guess every single mountain out there is important to somebody to be retained in its, uh, in its original contour. But mining is what we do here in West Virginia. And, and it's just something we do extremely well. Yeah, and there's, there's no reason, I, absolutely, I don't think there's any reason you, they, there shouldn't be pride taken in there at all. But, to be frank, I was just horrified at this, this uh, form of mining where they just kind of take away mountaintops. And I'm wondering what that impact is or, in, or what you consider the impact to be. There's no pretty way to mine coal. <laughs> you know, nature has a remarkable way of, of healing itself over time. So those are the mountains of West Virginia, which so many people talk about, and then when you see it from the air, it is another level of understanding the devastation around here. And to the extent that a mountain is removed, a little bit of a misnomer there. We're removing mountain tops. You know, we're not removing the entire mountain. Uh, so how far down would you go, for example? Well, so, sometimes it's the ground level, but it's seldom. Usually it's sometimes it is upper, Sometimes it is. in the world looking like Mars or Pluto, this is a great place to start. Hi, I'm visiting you from Zebulon 5, a new planet that Earth is conquering. We're currently blasting away to make room for <sighs> Earth inhabitants. Luckily, we can breathe here and it looks just enough like West Virginia to make you feel at home. We've been surface mining for 40, 50 years. So while we're here mining, you know, if we can reconfigure and reclaim this land to accommodate that post mine land use, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a win-win for everybody. Right. They're planning these things off, it's a win-win. And I'm sure you've heard this. You're getting 
land for an airfield, like things like an airfield or a golf course or a shopping center can be built on this plained land. Show us the shopping centers on them. Yeah, I mean, show us the airports. Yeah. Okay, show me the first one. And it's not there. I don't care what Chris Hamilton or anybody else is telling you. It's not true. It is not true. As far as growing back in a hundred years, there's no way. There's no way. Let's say two or three hundred. Two or three hundred years. I mean, there's no way. There's no way where if you don't have topsoil there, it's not going to grow. If you just go rabbits right that deep, you're out of the black dirt. You're down in the yellow. Yeah. That right. just that deep. Mm -hmm. From a distance, it looks like a green pasture. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. What they call a hydro city. Got this big hose like us in here now. We could spray it on those walls, <laughs> and it's so lush and green. And it would grow on the wall. Really, you can spray it on us and make it grow. Yeah, and but we call it grass on steroids. That's what we call it. But it's rock right under it. You know. It's a camouflage. It's camouflage. It's camouflage. It's camouflage. It is. This is it. This is hydro seed, and they spray the mountains with this, and then uh, everything grows back. Everything's fine. It's magical pixie dust. It feels like mulched toilet paper, dyed green. And there's little seeds in it, I think. I can't even tell. It'll look just like it used to. Trees and everything. As you can see, though, this is topsoil. <coughs> really good topsoil. And then once they put this really good topsoil down, you can come anywhere around here and check it out yourself. It's done with respect and attention to detail, and then they spray it with green toilet paper. And everything's back to normal. So nobody's losing. Nobody. It's not exactly surprising to find out that the miners and the mining companies don't get along, but to truly understand why and how they don't get along, you have to go to the miners themselves. I'm Wayne Lanham, retired coal miner, disabled coal miner, lived here all my life. 57 years old. I'm a radical, a redneck. <laughs> redneck started in this state, you know that? Because when they had the coal mining wars, you wore a red bandana around your neck. That way I could recognize you guys. Those guys over behind those bushes are, are union men. They're on my side. They're coal miners. The coal industry in the state has a horrible record on human relations. This, in this particular watershed here, in 1913 and 1914, there's a coal strike here. They're trying to unionize. The county had police there. The state had state police there. And when they come by Holly Grove, because the, the people with them kicked out is living in tents. It was Tent City. And when they come by, they opened up on them with a machine gun. Companies did that. That's why there's such a hard feelings towards coal companies. They just came up and shot the people. When you are hired, you sign a quit slip. You sign a slip that says you quit. It's not dated. So when it gets down to the point that you do something that I don't like as a coal operator, I tell you, so Wayne, today's your last day. Well, why? You know, something wrong? Yeah, you quit. Oh, no, I didn't quit. Oh, yeah, here's your quit slip. You signed it. And you do not have a leg to stand on. Most people outside the state, and some for in the state, don't realize the history, and it's the same pattern being played over again. At the end of every shift, I noticed that you could actually hear the mountain powering down and then powering back up again. And that's just because coal mining around here is a 24-hour operation. At the end of the day shift, the miners go to their local watering holes, so we follow them there. Like, I love the coal mine because it's it's adrenaline rush, you know. I mean, I, I brought home her back from Florida, and I said, you know what? I'm working the coal mine. I'm gonna take care of you. Her job is to take care of my house, take care of my daughter. I do everything else, and I love her for that. You know. Like, I didn't, I didn't want to come into this. It just happened. I mean, yeah, the money is good and the money is great, but. The money is not worth nothing but him. Being totally honest, do you think I like one underground knowing that I can die? <laughs> knowing that there's a, there, there's a big chance that I can die? Well, yeah. I do it for so many.
All coal miners deserve $35 an hour or more because they work their ass off and without them the country would fail. So right now to me, coal mining is a, is a necessary evil. And it's not, it's not, it's not the miners that are the ones. We're not evil. The miners themselves aren't the bad. Ones. You've met me. You've yeah. met him. You've met him. We're not bad guys. With corporate American CEOs and people like that, they're going to want to make the big dollars, and we're just tools. If the mines aren't so good, if you've known this for generations, why don't you just leave and? Go somewhere else and get a job somewhere else. I mean, it's like if you graduate from high school and we said, we'll give you a job making $17 an hour working in the mines. You're at medical, dental, and vision. And blah, blah, what are you going to do? Or you can go do the college, try to do the college, even if you are smart, or go work at McDonald's. What are you going to do? You go to the mines. So do you think they're just going to keep leveling this whole area? If we, can let, if we let them, they'll level this whole place. You might feel bad about it because you're worried about the environment. But you're still gonna cut the top off this mountain because hey, I gotta eat. You know, I've got shit I gotta do. You see that mansion on top of that mountain yonder? Can you see that through your camera? That that, that weird looking thing yeah, on top of the hill? That's, that's a mansion up there? That's Don Blankenship's one of his mansions, right there. <laughs> because he's he is knowingly I won't say intentionally, but he is knowingly endangering the lives of every man, woman, and child in this area for miles and miles and miles. I don't know how he sleeps at night. The symbolism of that, him up there and you down here, is remarkable. Just the symbolism of that. And that he has a bird's eye view, potentially, of watching everybody down here get yep. washed away. There's more coal left in these mountains than has been mined. He intended to buy all this property out, and he's tried, and he still intends to do it, force it done if necessary, to move all the people out here, and then start taking these mountains down step by step. I've spent 59 years here, and I'm not going no place unless he washes me off. I'm, I'll die here. Not bad, huh? I, I I start getting to talking about Don. I start getting pretty upset, so I won't say too much. <laughs> we, we have a right, and you know, especially kids have right as much as he does. You know, why why does why does people like that think that they can? I don't know. <laughs> it, it's like they don't care if they. It's like they, they don't care if they go ahead and, and and kill us and let, you know, like my kids here, they're 14 and 15, you know, what what's going to happen to them? You know, we have local residents who have legitimate concerns and we have processes and programs in place to try to deal with those concerns. And then we have, we have also another portion of our population Charles. who simply do not like mining mm -hmm. and would just as soon see it all be abolished or all go away. Who are they? It doesn't sound like it's... And, uh, who would those people be though? Well, I saw both, both in the committee yeah. room today. Okay, so we're at the... We're at the West Virginia Legislature and this is uh, Subcommittee B. And this hearing's going to deal with this slurry injection into the mine shafts. <laughs> After coal's mined, there's a lot of uh, leftover rock and unusable materials, as well as chemicals from the coal mining process. This stuff's called coal slurry, and it gets pumped back into the mountain. It's legal. The mining companies claim it's regulated, and the citizens whose well water and drinking water is contaminated claim is making them sick. Basically what we do is when we permit the, uh, the sites themselves, we have a half mile radius for on groundwater surveys for the, for the permit. I, I, I think I'm confused. <laughs> now, um, you can't uh, inject within a quarter of a mile of a well or a municipality. 
Well, then, um, I don't know if you were present at the last meeting last no, month when we had several people who brought samples of their water, which had huge contaminants in it. I think a lot, a lot of people don't understand that you have to maintain a well just like you do your car. A lot of people just turn on the spigot and they think it's going to work for them uh, when they had things like iron hydroxide precipitate and other metals build up in their wells over the years. And every time I go out on a well complaint, I tell people, you need to have a friend at the local volunteer fire department to come out and flush your well out a couple of years. Again, they're going to blame it on somebody else. They're not going to take the blame. I mean, just like you know, the far-fetched notion that you're not cleaning your wells out. Uh, you know, I've never heard of that. Never heard of it. I have never ever heard of that. That guy's an idiot. You See, quote me on that. Yeah, <laughs> Tell he, him to come on over here too if he wants a piece of it. But uh, you know, those guys play, they make fun of your common sense. Yeah, they do. Common sense. And, and where is the, the the toxins coming from? I mean, if if you have used your uh, well for generations and never had a problem with your well water, then all of a sudden you get uh, you know toxic metals coming in your well. Where did it come from? Why wasn't it there a hundred years ago? But it's kind of odd that someone nearby you is injecting into the ground the same thing that's coming into your well and your well has been operational for generations after generations than to say you're not cleaning your well out. But you, you, you was there, you heard those two gentlemen from the DEP make the statement that they could prove that nothing that had been done in the mining industry had harmed our drinking water. Mm -hmm. And it was just a damned outright lie. They're killing people. And it's, somebody has to do something to stop it. Protection agencies are supposed to be helping you, local government, state government, federal government how this just goes on for this long. I just, it, it boggles politics, my mind. Politics, pol politics. I'm waiting, it's been a year and a half now, almost two years, I'm still waiting on a man that works for the DEP. He's in charge of the gas wheel mining operation in the state of West Virginia. I'm still waiting for a call back from him. You've gotta be kidding. No, I'm not kidding, and I've got the number of calls that I called and who I called and who I talked to. You truly have no idea what goes on around here. Things I want to say to you, I, it'll come to my mind, then I forget it, but the doctor from New York that called me and told me, he said, I'm surprised you can talk as much lead as you've got in your brain. Could you explain to me what's, how this is affecting your family, though, like physically? Brittany, come in here. Tell me, you went to the doctor today, what did the doctor say? Nothing. What did he say about the knot on your cheek? It could be a fluid sac or it could be a cyst, he didn't know. So what, what's, what do you got to do? Nothing. He gave me antibiotics and sent him on. He don't want you to go see nobody else? What kind of antibiotics did he give you? I've never heard of him. And I got a little boy, he's nine years old. From the time he was a child, he's been on antibiotics more than half of his life because of this damn water and we didn't know what was causing it. Right there is what I have to take on a daily basis to stay alive. Now, that's almost hard to believe. Can I see this, please? Yeah. And I'm not going to be here long because you cannot live with that many chemicals in your body. How does that make you feel saying that out loud? Mister, I'm just telling you the truth. I know. I'm telling you what a doctor told me. Don't plan on being here long having to take that kind of medicine. I've got stacks of these tablets. This is the amount of medicines I take, and I have to take them. I don't take them because I want to take them. I want to be alive for that little boy. This is what they claim isn't happening. Yeah, the DEP the and DEP, the EPA. The EPA, the mining companies, the everybody who's not living in these areas, everybody who's not a miner are claiming this isn't happening. This doesn't happen, that's right. And that this is your imagination. What do you think every night before you go to bed? What, you pray before you go to bed. 
and you just ask God to take care of your family. That's all you can do because man has done done the damage to the earth. And man, I don't see how man can correct what's been done. God can handle this. He will, when the right time comes, he will, he will do what has to be done.